Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, just hanging out in the grow space. I have a new plant that came in the mail, a very special and interesting plant. Unique, often labeled as rare. I think it's even over here on the sticker, at least what's left of it that I haven't marked out. Rare, rare Thailand import. I have a lot to say about this plant. Might be a controversial plant, I don't really know. We'll dive into all that. The main thing is that it's cool. What's in this box? It's a neat plant, a neat plant inspired by a very unusual planter. I got this in a video, I don't know how long ago, not that long ago, where I was just unboxing odd random weird pots. Threw a cactus in there with some crazy gravel, it was just giving me 90 vibes and it made me think about the moon cactus. Y'all know about those moon cactus? You see them at the hardware stores, big box shops, have them all the time. Actually probably one of the most sold cactus worldwide because of their ease of propagation. It's a cactus that's been chemically treated, I believe from the seed stage to bring out really intense colors, colors that are so intense the plant can't even survive on its own. It needs to be grafted onto stock. It's usually put on the stock of Hylocereus, which is a dragon fruit. The two plants don't really go together. The moon cactus being the Gymnocalaceum, Mahavakii, or just Mahavakii. I hear different people say it different ways. Don't come for me. I will have typed it out on the screen. Left untreated and just growing in its natural state, it's a nice greenish brown cactus, depending on the time of year. They shrivel during winter and can get more of that brownish tone to them. They offset readily. They put off lots of little offsets. I don't need to show you this. I'll put it up here on the screen. Tons of little babies pop off the sides. You let them get big enough, you pop those off, graft them onto a new sign, onto a new stock, that is the actual top that you're grafting on is the cyan. They can't live on their own. They don't have any chlorophyll, so they have to be grafted onto something. Hylocereus, which is the stock for the plant, dragon fruit, right? They have different growing requirements than the gymnocalaceum, but they're very easy to graft with. But growing, for the most part, where you're growing them, but they're a tropical cactus. They like more moisture and everything than the gymnocalaceum does. So what usually happens is that stock ends up branching off and doing its own thing in spite of there being a cactus grafted right to its top and it just doesn't usually work out. It's not for a long time. But there is an alternative. There's also variegated versions. Tons and tons to choose from. Some of them potentially chemically treated. I don't know. Some of them may be natural from the seed source. A lot of digging on that and haven't found a ton of information on that either way. If it says Thailand import, it's potentially chemically treated. We can talk about that some more, but I've gone on long enough about the background with the gymnocalaceum figure. You probably wanna see what's in the box. Got a variegated gymnocalaceum in here. There are so many to choose from. Like I said, tons of different color options. Some of them have even been given names based on the variegation pattern. This one is called lipstick and it is supposed to be a nice looking pinkish orange sunsetty. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's nice. That's a nice looking plant. That has some really great color to it. When I'm shopping for a variegated gymnocalaceum, something to pay attention to, something I like to pay attention to is how much green the plant has in there. They need, I'm gonna just ballpark and say 30 to 50% somewhere in there. You're going to want green. If they don't have any green, then they need to be grafted. This one doesn't have as much really as I would like for it to, but if it's made it to this size right here without being grafted onto something, then it's probably okay. With a round little ball of a cactus like this, wouldn't expect there to be much change with the variegation as it grows, but you never know. Some of that could go away, the color that is, and it could become more green. The opposite could happen and it could end up not having anywhere near as much of the color as it did originally. I have a blend here that's a roughly 50-50 blend of a gravel that's mixed in with an inert potting mix. That's really all these guys need. It just needs to be something that drains very, very quickly. You don't want it to be too organically rich because that can rot the cactus out. You don't want it to be something that's going to clump up. You want to make sure that it can dry out quickly. There's not a lot else to it. Some sand, perlite, gravel blended in with and peat or coconut. It's a cactus blend and somehow a piece of that bright neon gravel from the boombox planter worked its way in there. I'm okay with that. It can hang out. I'm just going to be potting this up into a very small container. I would like to put it in the boombox, but really I think this needs some more size or I would need like two or three of them to put in that boombox because this is, it's very small. 
in comparison, and I think that it would get lost in there look kind of silly, especially with the multicolor gravel. You wouldn't really see it. It should be a solid color. So for now, just sticking with something small. This should be good for it, and these, they're very easy to pot up. You just make a little well, take that tip, get it down in there, and that's it done. Not even planning on watering it in. My grow space where I have this out right now, it is extremely humid and the humidity alone is generally enough to get these guys going. Tend to run more of a risk of rotting a cactus out if you get them moved into a moist blend right off the bat. So I'm going to let it just chill and hang out for, I don't know, maybe a couple of weeks to a month and then give it a very, very, very light drink. If I notice it shriveling further than it has, then I'll go ahead and give it a water. Not expecting that to be too much of an issue though. It should root out on its own just fine in there. If it were late spring into summer, then I'd go ahead and water it in because I would more than likely have this outside. These gymnocalaceums, they're a zone 10 and up. They don't like really any cold, particularly when you get towards the frost zone, that will kill them. So uh, it's a fine plant to keep outside when it's warm enough, as long as you have frost-free conditions. Ideally, temperatures over 60 degrees Fahrenheit are going to be better for them, but they can handle some dips into the 40s, maybe upper 30s if it's very, very brief. Luckily, they're very small, not very hard to move in and out. They don't even max out at that large of a size. I believe these only get like, I think about four inches on the max. They're a very small cactus. Gymnoclasiums in general are a fairly small cactus. I just realized that this is a little bit lopsided. I need to straighten that out. Want to make sure it has even growth as it gets going. If you have a chopstick, that's a good way to get in there and just gently move the soil in around the base of the plant. I don't have one out here with me right now, so I'm just going to trust my fingers to get the majority of that done. That should be good. This one is slightly shriveled, not that much, just a little bit. You'll see them in variations of being really swollen and just looking like a ball to basically like this. Sometimes they'll even have a deeper indentation in between those ridges. If it starts to feel soft, then I have some concern. But until then, everything's fine. This is good. This is fine. This is the lipstick. That's just what they've called it. It has, I don't know how it's going to come across on camera. I might need to adjust my settings. See, as I move it, you get to see different colors. The top of it is a very coralish red. It fades off into a yellowy orange, and then you have the green in there. Like I said, I do wish this one had just a little bit more green in there. Just as a backup, have a nice chlorophyll backup is going to make it easier. Going to have less risk of things going wrong with the plant, but I'd say this is pretty good. There are tons to choose from online. Like I said, some of them have been named, like this one being called the lipstick. There's one I believe that's called T-Rex that has reddish and green banding across it. There are a lot, there are tons of them. Price-wise, they're all over the place and it's never explained as to whether or not they're naturally variegated or if it's been induced. You can grow them from seed. I even bought a seed kit because I want to try that out on the channel but I don't know if those seeds have been chemically treated. I have no idea. So until a grower says, hey, mine flowered, and I crossed it with another, and now I have seeds of variegated ones, and those are bringing up variegated ones. I, I don't know. I got nothing for you there. That's what the comment section is for. I guarantee you, somebody will set that straight at some point about whether or not they come up true from seed as variegated. I'm inclined to say that they will, as long as they're from true variegated stock, right? If it's one that's been chemically induced and you're trying to produce that, then probably not, right? You're just gonna get some weird little, probably freaky mutant plants. Okay, is that any better? Yes. I turned off some of my lights because it was just giving so much glare that it was harder to see that orange and pink tone that's in there. That's a little bit better. If you're going to buy these, I would really suggest probably getting them from a listing that says this is what you're buying, like the picture is actually the plant for sale, and sellers that have a video. A video is really nifty because it gives a better idea of what they actually look like. Oftentimes when you buy a variegated gymnoclasium, it's going to look much more vibrant in those pictures than what you're actually going to get. Some of them actually are really intense and vibrant. I was not expecting this to be anywhere near as colorful as it is. I assumed that there was a good amount of filtering and photoshopping going on in the picture with it, but I would say this is actually, I think it's much prettier in person than it was in the listing. You're just gonna have to take my word for it because I can't, I can't get the dang thing to show its color on camera. I'll do some color correcting potentially if I need to. What's on the computer screen, I'll have a better idea of what everybody's seeing. Maybe it'll come across as beautiful for y'all as it does for me. On plants, the word rare is thrown in with them a fair amount. It's not a rare plant. Gymnocalaceum myhavacii is a very common cactus. The variegated ones 
also very, very common. There will be some types where the variegation that they have, potentially their pattern is rare. I don't, that might be something that you're into. I don't know. Prices on them are going to range all over the place. And there are tons of fun colors to choose from. Not quite the same intensity and insanity that you see with those moon cactus that are sold all over the place that don't have any chlorophyll in them at all. But still, for being a plant that you don't have to graft onto something else, I think they look pretty awesome. And again, you gotta take that part with a grain of salt, right? If you get one that doesn't have much green on it, you might need to graft it to something and then you're getting into a whole nother thing, but that's not what this video is about. It's not that complicated though. Grafting cactus isn't particularly a difficult thing to do, at least not ones like this. Yeah, they're fun. Nothing natural looking about them other than I guess the shape, right? It almost doesn't even look like a real plant. If that's something you're into, great. Some people prefer a more green aesthetic and things like this. Make them very angry. I love and appreciate lots and lots of green. Love some green plants, but sometimes I like a little bit of spice and some heat. <laughs> and that's where this came in. That's what happened here. Comment down below, say hi. Tips, tricks, suggestions are a nice thing to leave down there in the comments for everybody to read if I didn't mention anything. I didn't really intend on this being a grower's guide for the gymnocolasium. Just wanted to make sure I put out the things to look out for, how you'll have better success and a better alternative to those moon cactus, right? Because those aren't going to live very long. You still get something very bright and vibrant with the variegated gymnocolasium. They're plants that you could potentially have for a very, very, very long time, assuming that they hold on to enough of that green. This one, it could probably use some more, but like I said, I think if they made it to being nearly two inches in diameter, maybe a little bit over two inches actually without being grafted on something, then it's probably going to be okay. Probably gonna be okay without being grafted on something. That's what I meant to say. Very pretty cactus, lots and lots and lots to choose from. Everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. This is so pretty. This is such a nice looking plant. Of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.